what's up scrappy peeps it's Adele from Inky Quill and today we're getting our embossing on because I'm trying to use my embossing powders more I I really love the way that they look uh, but I often forget to reach for them because they're I, I love paint so much and so I have some embossing powders there's a ranger one and then this gold one um, a lovely friend sent me so I'm not quite sure of what the brand is I've forgotten what it is um, but any any embossing powders will do if you want to have a go at scrap lifting this layout you could also just stamp in a black permanent ink um, it won't give you the raised finish and I'm not sure how watercolor if watercolor would kind of dull the black a little bit um, but the great thing with embossing is that when you watercolor with them the it acts the the embossing once it's been heated I guess melted whatever you may call that process it becomes like a waterproof uh, lip so that everything that you add the watercolor inside it it can't run out anyway you'll see what I mean when I when I get to that point now I know you might be thinking Adele didn't think you did butterflies remember your phobia of butterflies and I know but I've come to terms with I can deal with cartoony looking butterflies I butterflies that are more kind of not I'm sure there's butterflies in the world somewhere that are these colors that I make maybe not gold but um, that are the colors of the wings but in, in my neighborhood I'm not seeing these butterflies so it's okay I can I can work with them I wasn't sure if I wanted to use those or the hearts so I just did both and in the end I actually do go with the hearts uh, so I've got all of these beautiful blub, 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 blubberflies I've got some blubberflies guys I've got these beautiful winged creatures there we go uh, for us for another project soon so I'm using the stamp set from the more than words collection from Coco Vanilla and I'm also using some of the papers and other goodies from Coco Vanilla today as well so I'm just embossing and if you want a video more on how to emboss um, do let me know basically you just put the stamp in a special stamp pad you stamp it on put some powder on heat it up and you're good to go and now it's time to get a bit colorful and I again I knew I didn't I knew I probably didn't need all of these but I thought while I've got the heat gun out and I'm feeling in the mood to fussy cut because uh, let's be real not always in the mood to fussy cut I thought I'll make too many and then I can just pick and choose what color I wanted to go with so I did some that were pinky colored some that were very purple some that were blue and yellow and pink uh, and just a whole mixture just lovely soft soft colors I was going for the good thing about the embossing powder is that it does create a like a, a lip so that all of the watercolor um, it's like a waterproof surface so you can just wipe it off the embossing powder section and it doesn't soak in it's it just runs off it it's like plastic uh, so that's always fun to use watercolor with them it's I really want to do this um, with a process video for you guys with uh, my floral stamps I love doing it with those and it's just a it's just a fun thing to do I'm using my Winsor & Newton watercolors which are my faves they're nice and bright but they're they're quite expensive they're um, there are definitely if you're looking for watercolors this isn't the first set that you buy have a play with watercolors and see if you would like them first and experiment with them before you invest in a, um, a more expensive set because quite often you do find that for for what you're using them for you don't you can just use um, like a, an affordable set uh, I know that there's the the one that everyone has the white one with the little circle palettes it's like four by maybe or eight or ten down the side there's, there's a fair amount of watercolors in there I used that watercolor set for years before I got this one so there's there's always other options now it's time to fussy cut and don't worry I saved you from seeing all of that you didn't need to, to watch me fussy cut for for ages and ages and like I said I wasn't sure with the colors I also wasn't sure with the embossing powders if I wanted black or gold and so in the end I do actually use a combination of both of them uh, this paper here, here is just some extra note paper I had left over from a different project and it was on my desk sorry about the lighting there uh, and it was it was just sitting there so I thought hmm it might give me an extra layer of prettiness I'm really enjoying I think it's because I've been stalking Suze Fisher's Instagram if you don't follow her on Instagram oh 
it's delicious. It's it's scrumptious the way that she curates her Instagram to just look so beautiful. Um, Suze, if you're watching, I drool over it every day. In not in a stalker way, but I do visit your Instagram every day. Just just saying, <laughs> not in a creepy way. Uh, but I recently scrap lifted a layout from Sue's for the Citrus Twist. Uh, Nash, uh, in, I call it International Scrap Day because we're over here and we're scrapping in Australia too. Um, and I scrap lifted one of Sue's layouts and she did some um, some note paper and things in hers. So I've been on a bit of a kick of that. And now it's time to try out the pink and the purple distress oxides now I a lovely friend sent me some of these and I haven't I, I've tried the blues and I tried there was a greeny one I think it could have been pistachio but I haven't tried the pink and the purple yet and they're lovely I knew they would be they're just the purple especially is not a color that I usually go for but it's a it's a bit of a pinky purple uh, and there I mixed them together and kind of made this soft floaty background I knew that my photo was going to cover up probably three quarters of it uh, but I was okay with that and I was just trying to figure out where to to put this photo now I thought it was appropriate to pull out the cocoa vanilla today um, because the beautiful owner of cocoa vanilla Zoe is here in this photo with my friends Nita and Lauren and we had a scrappy girls weekend away where we just sat and scrapbooked i know that lauren has a video i'll put the links to all of their youtube channels in the description below as well um lauren did a couple of lages uh, lages lages what's a lager del layouts and pages in her project life uh with photos from this weekend so make sure you check those out as well and give up give them some inklet love and give them a bit of a subscribe so i'm going through the sticker sheet here and i had previously made these little diy embellishments i have um I have a video over here on YouTube making some DIY embellishments from a couple of years ago, I think. And then over on Patreon, I do one every few months, um, an updated um, embellishment video. And these ones, I think, I don't know if I made them for a Patreon video or if they were part of a in-person class that I taught. They might have been part of the class that I taught. Um, and the great thing about them is that just that they're ready to go. You can just stick them down and go, go, go. And so it was when I found these that I decided to go for the, the hearts. I did actually cut out a little bit of... Um, my umming and ahhing where I was just holding butterflies to the page and then hearts, butterflies, hearts, butterflies, hearts. Because you know how I tell you guys you just got to stick and plonk. I think this day I was feeling a little indecisive and I, I just wasn't uh, able to figure out. So it wasn't until I found the embellishments I'd already made that kind of directed me in where I wanted to go. Because when I, when I start a scrapbook page, I usually have no plan. Um, I would say 95% of the time I, I have maybe a product in mind that I want to use or a certain sticker sheet in mind that I want to use, but I have no idea what the finished um, page will look like. I, I typically don't scrap lift. I do often, I do sometimes, no, I, I rarely actually, I rarely scrap lift myself, but that's always fun to do. So if you're feeling your mojo is a bit low, pull out your own scrapbook albums and see if there's a an older layout that you've made that you really love that you can go back and revisit. Uh, I just stuck down all those hearts and now I'm doing some of the beautiful enamel dots, which I really should have bought like 50 packets of these. I really should have, um, but I, I'm not sure if they're still available. I think they might be possibly, uh, and they're just beautiful. If you're looking for some enamel dots, these are nice because they have hearts and circles at the same time. Just adding a few little bits here and there. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for my title. Um, with this collection, there are some beautiful like I could have used some of the words that were in the collection but I decided we we call ourselves scrappy girls on tour because that's what we did we were scrappy girls and we were on holiday we went for a little vacation and so I decided I had to do the title uh, scrappy girls on tour and I just used this beautiful pen which I forget the name of it starts with food I think 
Uh, it's a Tombow. So if you look up Tombow, it's whatever their pen is, brush type of pen that starts with the letter F. And I just wrote it out uh, with that. And then I did go over and add a little bit of white detail with my Uniball uh, Signo in the broad tip, just with the white pen. Just I feel like it kind of brightens the title a little bit, something that I've done for quite a while. And um, it just, yeah, just kind of picks up the title a little bit, picks up the words. So I'm pretty much done the majority of this page. I do add a little bit of journaling and also some hearty shine, of course. Um, but I really, I really want to try to use my stamps more. Um, one of my scrappy resolutions from, I filmed a video for Patreon at the start of the year that talked about my, my goals for this year and some of the things I wanted to focus on, one of them was to use my stamps. And I'm trying really hard. They, they may not be in every, layout but remember I do also make um, quite a lot of things that you guys don't see on camera as well I don't I don't film every single project that I do um, so I have done a few gifts I did some um, birthday gifts for people using some stamps and I, I just forget about them so what's what's your favorite thing to do with stamps do you like to just put them straight onto the background like I am here with this little heart one do you like to use them for titles? Do you like, I have so many alphabets that I just don't reach for. I, I don't know what it is. I, I need to kind of put them in a container just right in front of my face on my desk. Um, I think that's going to be the easiest way to use them. Maybe, maybe each month I could pick five stamp sets and pop them on my desk. Yes, let's do that. Yeah, I think that might be the only way to get me to actually use my stamp. So if you want to join in the challenge, Grab five stamp sets and let's call it, let's call it, oh, I know, let's start a new thing called the Inky Five. I'm going to do a hashtag, Inky Five. And if I use any of these five stamp sets in any of my projects on Instagram, I'll share the hashtag Inky Five. Pick five things that you don't use enough. So if it's maybe paints, pick five paint colors. If it's embellishments, pick five embellishments. If it's um, puffy stickers, pick five packs of puffy stickers. Put them in a container on your desk for the month of May and see if you can get using them as much as possible. I'm going to go pick out my five stamp sets after this. I think that's the only way I can do it, guys. Thanks so much for watching today. Um, I have a blog post over on the Cocoa Vanilla blog if you'd like to see some more close-up pictures. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!